Ma, oh, ma, oh, ma. Okay, we have a long, drawn out video for you today, but let me tell you, I tried my absolute best here. Okay, I actually tried, I promise. My goal was to create this, um, an actual area of the park. So like, this is going to be Africa and I wanted to map it out and I wanted to get it all set up. That way, whenever I started building, I had a layout in mind and I could like keep with a, with a design and oh my gosh, I thought I was doing such a great job. Um, and I, it's not that I did bad or anything. I just, man, this was tough. So I'm mapping out a lot of section. The goal is to have a savanna, to have lions, to have crocodiles, to have hippos. And we have all of those. Um, we do have some elephants, but I'm not satisfied with their habitat right now. So we're not, we're just going to ignore that. But the idea was to have a whole little section that people could wander through and it would be Africa and it would circle back to the main area and then eventually to have a safari behind the Africa section and then be able to use the animals, the offspring of the animals in the main section for the back section. And um, I mean, that's still a plausible idea, but uh, at the moment, this part is taking forever. I mean, it's got to have taken almost a month now. So as you can see, there's a lot of mapping going on, a lot of craziness going on. I will spare you any more of the details. We will get to the build for this Savannah exciting tour of Africa now. Alrighty, so our first stop is going to be the Savannah, the Africa Savannah. So um, I have been watching a lot of uh, the Irwin's show, and I love the Australia Zoo. I will be there one day. I have to visit. It is absolutely spectacular, and I really liked how they had their savanna set up. So they had the animals had an entire section in the back, but then they also had the opportunity to come out onto the savanna and you know, graze around and then go back if they wanted to. So that was the idea with this. I also got to practice the different terrain levels. So I wanted the animals to kind of be like on risers as like, like a choir riser. Um, I wanted animals to be able to go up higher for you to see them. And then for also for them to be able to like gently like glide down and, and um, go to the watering hole and do other things. And that was the main goal for this. Um, I did try to use these statues because I was like, I am gonna build this entire thing and it's not even gonna be right. So um, a lot of that went into this was just like layering the the area so that way we can create the, uh, the perfect like illusion of more space. And in here we were gonna have rhinos, giraffes, zebras, um, is it gazelles or springbok I think. I'm not sure it's one of those. Uh, basically a bunch of stuff that goes together. We wanted to put as many as we could back here and um, it worked. And we even put a sh um, some behind the scene buildings in the back. It was kind of extravagant. Um, and I think in the future, um, I may actually even do some editing to the space in the back. But for now, it was really, really cool to build and it looks really, really great. And it's actually really, really, uh, it's really, really, <laughs> it's actually, um, it was pretty fun and I enjoyed it and I feel like they had a lot of space. The viewers, the, uh, the guests are able to look straight out at the entire savanna and nothing's gone. If the animals want to hide, there is a backstage area that they can go to and if they want to be out, everyone can see them. You know, there are no bad views where we are. Now, like I said from the beginning, this turned into a headache. I was trying to take some of my own advice and build this thing from the ground up with a plan in mind. And having a plan was almost equally as hard as not having a plan. So um, this area really does start to come to life um, suddenly. Like it'll, it just took a while, but then all of a sudden things um, just started clicking and I started getting these ideas and I really enjoyed it because uh, I felt like I felt it felt right the way that everything was coming together it felt right so for example we are going to be moving the pathway in just a second to get closer to the animals and 
I started thinking to myself kind of as if I was actually designing these real habitats in real life. Like, what would I as a guest want to see of the animals? And I honestly would want to see them at the watering hole. You know, I would like to see them um, drinking and, you know, kind of just being able to see how they would really interact with their habitat in real life. You know, for example, um, the watering hole in in real life is a big deal and it's a place where animals come together. Um, I've even read that um, you know, for giraffes to drink from the watering hole, they're very vulnerable because of the position that they have to go into. So they will spend a lot of time um, like mapping out the area to make sure that there are no predators around. And once they decide it's safe to drink, other animals will also decide that it is safe to drink and they will all drink together. So for me, I kind of thought about that and I was like, this is a really cool idea for the watering hole. Let's make it to where guests can really see these animals interacting together um, in an area that literally sustains life. So that was really fun. You can see where it's at now and guests actually flock to this area. If you remember from earlier, from a previous video, I said I wanted to make pathways bigger. I did and it's still not big enough. So they are um, hovering at this waterhole area, which is really exciting. So some fun things that I used uh, during this build um, was the faux rocks. I, um, I guess I'd watched some just some videos on YouTube about different types of rocks, and I never even paid attention to these because I, I, I'm not sure. I think it says aquatic rocks. I'm not sure, but once I learned that you can change the color of them, it made it a lot cooler. And not only that, but they are very textured. So the more that you spin them around and play with them, you can. Put them together and create these really cool like custom looking rocks so i mean even make your own custom rocks and then you can save it as a blueprint so we are just lining the entire pathway this is going to be our like miniature um barrier besides what the guest will have but um just kind of kind of like polishing it off uh, i did have a lot of trouble with some of these animals because i was um not used to the way that they can run and jump and climb so i actually spent a lot of time after the first initial build capturing escaped animals so um lesson learned these rocks do help stop that but i did not realize that at the time so that was not something that happened um something i learned later on but i digress it worked i like these rocks they're great So while we build for a while, um, it wouldn't be a speed build unless we actually learn something about some of the animals that were going into the to the um, habitat. So for this habitat, um, we'll start with the um, the white rhinoceros. Um, so in the game, there are two different species of rhinoceros. There is the Indian rhinoceros, and then there is the southern white rhinoceros. For this one, southern white rhinoceros are the ones we will be going with. They are from Africa, and they came in the Africa pack, which is pretty cool. Um, I I like the Africa pack. I like a lot of the African animals. The savanna has always been something that's been like very um, intriguing to me growing up. I really love giraffe, and I really love uh, elephants. Um, rhinoceros they're like the unicorn of Africa and I absolutely love them so in the wild uh, white rhinoceros are threatened are they're considered near threatened um, by the ICUN they are often hunted for the keratin that is found in their horns which is um, in my opinion very silly because we have keratin in our fingernails and our hair and um poachers are are still going for it it's been said to have like medicinal purposes and um and all that's been proven not to be true so it's kind of a shame that they're hunted for this um and uh, it's not really you know doing anything so the white rhinos are also solitary animals. The males live sol uh, in solitary. The females may sometimes group together. Um, so for the savanna purposes, um, there are, I believe, going to be, I put two in here um, and with plenty of room to spread out if they want. A lot of the times they're just together for mating purposes, which is still pretty cool. 
Now, in the wild, there is said to be approximately 18,000 white rhinos left, and um, they are the largest species of rhino, and they are found primarily in South Africa. You can find all of this information um, in the Zoopedia, which can be found in the game, and I found it from the uh, Planet Zoo fandom section of fandom.com uh, you can find it all there the zoopedia absolutely an amazing place to find uh, resources and information about these animals that um, are very accurate to the current uh, situation and conservation status now next up on our list of amazing savanna animals that we have in this habitat is one of my absolute favorites it's the reticulated giraffe i absolutely love reticulated giraffe they are beautiful amazing amazing um, animals one of the areas that the zoo that i volunteered at when you first start you get to start in a few different areas one is the main entrance where you um where you're right next to the flamingos answering guest question. One of them is actually working the giraffe deck where they would have feedings and you would um, just kind of hang out there, um, you know, talk about giraffe with the uh, keepers. It was really exciting, something that I really, really enjoyed. So unfortunately, these giraffe are considered endangered. They are, um, can get up to about 18 feet tall, I believe, and their tongues can actually get to about 18 inches as well. Their tongues are prehensile, meaning that they are able to use them as an appendage, so they use that to um, wrap around leaves and stuff in trees and tear those down um, and eat. So it was really cool during the feedings, we would actually have like lettuce and they would take their tongues, wrap it around, and they would um, pull it and eat it. It's really cool really enjoyed that now like I said unfortunately they are considered endangered with only about 8,500 left in the wild most of the reason that they are um, endangered has to do with deforestation and agriculture in their areas um, which is a total bummer which is something that we can you know as humans can do to um, avoid and try to change our uh, practices just so that we don't um, mess up animals environments right super important that we don't so uh, another random fun fact about male giraffes is that um, they will uh, fight to see who can mate with the females and they do that by swinging their heads and kind of um, using their necks to fight their heads are really really heavy so um, the fights could be potentially very dangerous um, also something I kind of learned while I was volunteering, um, I believe it, don't quote me on this, but they have, um, the males have little bumps on their head and apparently the more bumps, the more attractive the male is to the females. So, um, yeah, I, we had one who was the older one and he had a lot of bumps on his head and they told me that in giraffe that is attractive. And finally, I just read this in the Zoopedia Fun Facts, but um, it says that Greeks and Romans believed that giraffes were a cross between camels and leopards. So the name giraffe is the Latin name um, is camel camelepardalis. Camelepardalis. Um, if anyone knows how to pronounce that, you more than welcome to let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, so they thought they were bet mixed between a, a camel and a leopard. How cool is that? Moving on to a shorter animal, we're gonna go with the Plains Zebra, uh, also from the um, from the Africa region, Eastern and Southern Africa, and is considered near threatened. Um, I like them. They look like painted horses, which I believe that is actually a thing, um, a thing with them. So their stripes actually do serve a bunch of purposes. One of them is that zebras will recognize each other by the different stripe patterns on their body. Another reason which they apparently are st is still debated, but um, 
Their stripes can also be used as um, a type of motion camouflage, which helps to confuse predators when the herds run in different directions. Um, they do sleep standing up in their big, big herds, and um, they will take turns watching for predators at night. So pretty cool. And then finally, we have our uh, spring fox. So they are also from Africa. They are considered at least concerned. And um, they... It says they uh, were featured in the standard edition of Planet Zoo. Hmm, fun So their populations are actually very large with about 2 million to 25 hundred thousand or 2.5 million sorry with 2.5 million in the wild now they are named because they will often jump 3.5 meters into the air and um, apparently especially during mating season the jumping behavior is known as pronking they can run up to 60 miles per hour, and apparently they don't need to drink water because they can get it from their food. Wow, that's pretty cool. You can find all of this information um, in the Zoopedia on Planet Zoo, or you can go to um, planetzoo.fandom.com and they have all of this information there. It is an amazing tool, an amazing resource if you are looking just to learn about some of these animals that you're building habitats for, I strongly encourage it. The more knowledge you know, the better we can kind of like do our part, you know? Zoos are great, but if we're learning about the animals, it makes it way, way better. So definitely that's planetzoo.fandom.com. I will put a link in the description below so that way you can check it out. Now from this section of the build, we are just working on the fence, which is really um, way less painful than it used to be because if you remember from the other videos, I had a setting on the app or on the game that was causing all of my things to move very strangely and I was able to fix that. So now I'm actually being able to use um, these pieces the way the game was intended to use them when you could connect them together um, of course I am still having issues with learning how to select things uh, so if you have any tips and tricks for that please let me know I would love to make it my life a little bit easier I have learned to just start building things off to the side so they're easier to select but I was really happy with this piece and the fact that there is lighting on the back of it made it even a little bit cooler but this will be the barrier piece that we use for the majority of the Africa habitats. Um, I liked it just because it was a piece that I put in from scratch and I just enjoyed it. You know, it actually looks like something you may see. I do um, need to work on making, I guess, smaller pieces. That way I can use them to make curves look more seamless, but you know, it's totally okay. Um, you may have just gotten a little glimpse of our next habitat. I did have a moment where I got sidetracked and I started working on a different habitat, so I've cut that, but um, I think you're gonna be really excited because I really like that habitat. Now we've moved on to the behind the scenes area. Don't get too comfortable with this part. I enjoyed making it, but I will say I, um, have plans on removing it later on um, it was fun to make and fun to practice but I I made it so that way like in real life you know the animals would go in for the night go out but in the game it doesn't really work like that um, the animals go where there are things for them to do so in this area we were building places for them to sleep and eat well they were spending a lot of time back here sleeping and eating and not on the um, actual savanna. So I, you'll see we're going to build two buildings. One of them is made for a giraffe, the other one's made for the smaller animals. Um, I actually removed one of those buildings later on in the game to um, give everyone the, uh, I guess, encouragement to go outside. And um, that worked. It was great. 
um, but I do think I want to rebuild it. Um, right now there's a little pathway that goes from the savanna to the back and I would like to rebuild it to where that is the entrance to their enclosure, to their sleeping enclosure. That way when they exit it, they're always on the savanna and not the back area. It was um, very interesting making this because I put a lot of the fencing back here so keepers could go in and out. Um, that was where the majority of the headache came from. It still turned out to be really cool, uh, but at the time I just was, I was blown away. I was so confused and I still get kind of confused sometimes whenever I'm trying to build the keepers entrances and exits, but um, as I get better, it's great. But at the time of building this, I was lost. I was very happy with the way that things came out. I put a specific keeper hut back here so that way they would not have to like run all over the place to go get these animals um, or to take care of these animals and that the keepers could literally just be right here because it's a big area and I didn't want I didn't want it to get unmanageable if you will there's not too much longer left in this speed build so I will just leave you with um, some more clips and there will be some wonderful animal footage at the very end for you to enjoy of our animals enjoying their new space. As always, if you made it this far and you enjoyed this channel, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow all that good YouTube stuff. And if I've encouraged you to do something good for the planet today, I hope you go out and it could be something so tiny, something like before you throw something away, maybe it could be recycled. And that's would change the world. So thank you and you're all wonderful and thanks so much for hanging out with us and enjoying our Savannah speed build. If you have any tips, tricks, ideas, um, if you want to share what you've done for your zoo, feel free to leave that in the comments below or you can go to the Twitter and leave us some comments over there as well. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of the speed build and have a fantastic day.